291 show, I grew up on this, so I'm gassed to be here. Windrush generation, big up all day, every day. Um, I come from Brixton. Is anyone in here from Brixton? Anyone a survivor from Brixton? Did you drive down? So I can get a lift then, innit? Um, mm -hmm. I live in Brixton with my flatmates, okay? But they're nasty people because they don't pay the rent and they get on my nerves. There's two of them. There's the man and the woman. Okay, so the man in the morning, right? He says, good morning. That's not necessary when you haven't brushed your teeth. It's, that's rude. You're stealing the goodness out of the morning. That's what you're doing. And then the woman, she's always going in the kitchen, going into the fridge, standing next to the fridge, about to open the fridge. And I feel like if I put the rent in the kitchen, she wouldn't even go in there in the first place. So she gets on my nerves as well. Our local um, borough is Lambeth, and they wrote to us. They said they were going to evict us. And I pointed out the two waste people over there. I said, it's those two people over there. And then they wrote back to me, and they said that how they're my children, and, and, and how I have to look after them, you know? I just thought there were two broke people in the house. Do you guys have broke people in your house following you? I know you feel my pain, innit? You feel my pain. Mm. I have a, um, a, the kind of name that as soon as you hear it, you know that I'm African. You know, like when, when we have children, we have naming ceremonies. Is there any Africans in the house? Yes. I, I would expect to hear more, being as we're doing Windrush and we know where we came from. Is there any Africans in the house? Oh, that's right. Is there any Jamaicans in the house? I didn't hear any gunshots or anything, so I'm not sure if you lot are real Jamaicans in here, okay? But yeah, so I'm from Brixton. I live with these two flatmates. Um, my mum's come over from Ghana. I really, I love all the old people. I think you guys are the most cutest, sweetest people, especially when you know how to reconcile, like when you're open to building bridges and stuff like that, you know? It's a beautiful thing. I was listening to, to a song and it reminded me of my mum so much. It goes, oops, upside your head, say oops, upside your head, eh, say oops. And when I heard the song, I was like, yeah, that song reminded me of when she used to beat me, you know? It's beautiful memories, it's beautiful memories. I don't know if you guys watched Black Panther a couple years back, did anybody watch it? Wakanda, Wakanda, forever, it was forever, in it? I was still doing it, and everybody was looking at me like I was weird. Like, it's forever, people. Keep the energy, the vibranium going, okay? I took my mum to go and watch Black Panther. I was explaining to her that it's our time to shine. It's our time. And then she came with me to the cinema. She bought a cooler box. She bought super malt, John of rice. Everything was in there. When we got inside there, she was, hey, of course, it's very dark in here. Uh -uh, I don't like it. I said, mum... The show hasn't started yet, that's where it is. And then halfway through the show, we can hear other people eating food and stuff, eating fufu and all types of stew inside the cinema. It was Wakanda forever. That vibe, that was a beautiful vibe. But when I cast my mind back to the 80s and the 90s, I had that kind of vibe, you know? We had Soul Train, we had Desmond's, we had the 291 show, you guys. Bring it back, man. We need this kind of stuff, you know? I'm sure that the, the, there's shows out there that have maybe grazed some ideas from the 291 show. I'm woke, you know. I stay woke out in these streets. That's what I do. So I was talking to my mum about the Windrush generation, and she was saying, ah, hmm, the way they done those people cry. She said, what the rough cut, what the bumper cut? I said, mummy. <laughs> I said, Mommy, why are you speaking like that? You're not even Jamaican. She said, yeah, but I've learned so much from them. <laughs> I, too, have learned so much from the Jamaican and the West Indian people. Like, if I go into a takeaway shop, right, and um, the woman kiss her teeth at me and she don't take my order, that means the food is going to be mm -mm 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 bad. The worse the customer service, the better the food. It's true. If they start smiling at you, they're begging it. That means no one comes into the shop. You know? But you know what's more beautiful 
What's even more beautiful is, back in my day, the Jamaicans and West Indians were over there, and then the Africans were over here. And we were trying to, they were trying to not be us, because there was something about us. Maybe it was something to do with the charity adverts that were running continuously, <laughs> you know. All up till today, Mfumfu hasn't got any food to eat. <laughs> she ain't got nowhere to stay. And she has to pay rent, but she has nowhere to stay. I don't know how that works, but they still don't have any water. So, and then we had AIDS, you know. Some of the kids have Ebola now. See how they try to resurrect it so you can still feel shame about yourself. There was all this stuff going on, and they had this song, do they know it's, why wouldn't we know it's Christmas time? It comes every year, we know it's Christmas time. Do you understand? All of this made it hard to be African. And you know what tore us apart? Hairstyles, the hairstyles. Because you lot had cane row, innit? You lot had cane row zigzags. I had threads, okay? I had threads, my mum would wrap that around my head and sticking out. Sticking out. And then, you know, sometimes the teachers will say that is kind of dangerous because the hair can stick someone <laughs> in their eye and stuff like that, you know? I, I was practicing how to be Jafakan because I loved your confidence, you know? You guys had the most confidence I've ever seen in a group of people. And it made me want to look at the map to see where is this Jamaica? Why are these people so extra more confident than us? Why? I couldn't understand it. So I looked at the map and what did I see? I saw a Surrey. I saw Essex, I saw Manchester, I swear I saw Croydon, Birmingham. I said, what's going on? I was too young to fully appreciate what was actually going on. Now, as I get older and I listen to different accents, I'm fascinated with accents, yeah? But when I listen to the Irish accent, they sound kind of Jamaican to me. Like this, the way they say tree. They say, all right, the way they say bacon. Exactly the same way you lot say bacon. Beer can. That's how they say it. So it's a beautiful thing the way that now Africans and Jamaicans were one. There's a oneness. There's kids out there that are both. So you can't bully them at school. Their, their jollof rice tastes better than your regular jollof rice. Do you understand? Back in the day, you was fully ashamed that you had to eat fufu, you know? <laughs> And also with me, I got to learn how to do the bogle. If it wasn't for my beautiful Jamaican friends, I wouldn't have known how to whine out my ways. I wouldn't know how to climb out the window to go to the Ordea, you know. Love them. So, so fully, fully, fully confident. But a bit about myself, I'm sure you guys are wondering, you know, like, because um, last year I was single and um, the year before that as well, I also spent it being single. And then also the year before that, there was a little pattern going back that way, yeah. But now, as you can tell, I'm glowing, isn't it? Yeah. Um, um, so I'm still single. <laughs> yeah. But it's only because, like me and my ex, yeah, we got, we got different religions, we got different perspectives on religions. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, he thinks he's God, I think he's Satan. <laughs> anyway, my name's been Miss Muriel. Enjoy the rest of your evening. <laughs>